All right, hello, hello. I'm gonna do another of the fun pick a pile and um, pick a toy. I had two left from the last time, so I set up two more piles. Actually, I set up six more. So there's gonna be a few more videos like these. I hope you're enjoying them. I'm just, uh, you know, I have extras of these from from Christmas time. Plus, I thought it would be fun, and my kids like them. And I'm doing charms. So let's start with the charms first for the piles one and pile two. So I'm. Hopefully, I can get this all in one video. Check the comments or the description to jump down to the other piles. Okay, so some charms. There's a key. There's always a key. This is an interesting little key. I'm going to put that on pile number one. About the moon. Okay, so maybe even also looking at this. I don't know if you can see it. The sun and the moon right there. Oh, there's three stars. No, four stars on this, this moon going this direction. Because this, oh, how interesting. There's a key. So the six instinct cards will be the first ones. I also have spirit animal on these and unicorns and some astro codes. So some new different cards. Um, wow. So it's interesting because this is where it would hang from. So that moon would hang just like this is, right? Okay, very interesting. That's over here on number one. Wow, there's music. Okay, a beautiful music note. It's a pink music note. Oh, there's a little rhinestone on that one. The music. The purple. Why do I... Pink and purple. And then a snowflake. Oh my gosh. It's going to snow or something. The snowflake. The new moon. So four charms for that one. Okay, this is going to be interesting. So these are two different ones. One is pink and one is white. These are left over. Okay, hmm, I'm going to pull the other charms and then I'm going to decide which one I'm going to put on those because I have no idea what toy it is either. This is part of the fun, okay? Oh, I got three for this one, a white apple. Look, it's very nice charm. A white apple with a little green leaf. There's a sea gold seashell. Oh, but there is a broken heart here. Oh, okay, so keep that in mind with this, this particular one, number two. The apple, it's a white apple but the blue heart hmm hmm okay I looked and there is something else that fell out a bow and arrow okay so the bow and arrow interesting this makes me think of like the teacher you know the apple um and something about heart healing or heartbreak or something like that you got the seashell too is there anything in this one okay no that's a cute though Oh my gosh, what this little, there's a little, I don't know, there's a little character. It looks like a little, that I haven't seen before when I look down at the charms. It looks like a little lamb or something or a monkey. I don't know, it's puffy. It's like, but there's the apple showing again and it has a little yellow heart in it. A lot of light pink and white. Okay. So pink and white. So white is going to go over here. That's helping me decide. So purple pinks over here. Okay, guys, here we go. I have no clue. This is part of the fun of trusting your intuition. So the sacred power reading cards are in this by Anna Stark. I even have some roses, the Oracle of the Roses, and then the star codes uh, by Heather Rowan Robbins. Robbins. Okay, and Sherilyn Darcy. Those are some of the main decks in here. Okay, okay, whoa, here we go. It's a dino attack, nerf gun, okay? Look, so you even got the bow and arrow and the dino attack. So another nerf gun, egg shot, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, there's another clue, so that's your toy. Oh, for the white one, the white heart, the teacher, whatever it is. But there's the blue heart that looks broken. Okay, so over here, so that's pile two. If you're ready and you know you want that one, then look at the comments, jump down, or look at the description box. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, this one is SpongeBob. <gasps> oh my gosh. You guys, I don't know why I'm so excited about these. It's, oh my gosh, it's Patrick. It's Patrick. Guys, it's Patrick. SpongeBob, Nickelodeon. Oh my gosh. Surprised Patrick. A meme. You surprised Patrick. <laughs> Love it. 
Sorry, I'm excited for that. I I don't know. I'm pretty excited. Okay, so we're going to start with pile number one. So if you want to see pile two, check the comments or the description. I'm going to get started now. That was fun. This is all part of the fun of it, even for me, guys. I hope you enjoy it. I'm just going to read. I don't know what cards. There's some good messages. I know we got spirit animal, good oracles. There is some tarot in here to see. So Patrick, oh, here we go. What time is it? 520, 20, 521. So Taurus or Gemini's, whatever. But Patrick also makes me think of like hmm, Aquarius energy, but because he's a starfish and SpongeBob, it makes me think of Leo's as well. Okay, I like plankton. <laughs> so we got all your charms there. You just barely saw them because you started it with this. I like this. These are really nice charms. Sagittarius. Okay, so interesting enough, so these don't read upside down, but 96 maybe is important because these are the six instinct cards. But let's see, the first one is about miracles. Spiritual gift to perform acts of supernatural power that has recognized by others to have altered the ordinary course of nature. So there was 96 there, but there's also some Gemini energy for sure, dude. Oh my gosh, the music. Sagittarius. Okay, let's see what this one is. Mars, passion even, the urge to assert the self and the sex drive, will, energy, and drive. So the ruler of Mars is the Aries energy, right? And Scorpionic, but wherever your Mars is too. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's four even. <laughs> two of those. Okay, let's see what your spirit animal is. I also have, um, so I added in some stuff from Scorpionic and Virgo and a, I think an Aquarius energy because I felt drawn. I just said I was going to bring in the Astro Star Code, so I'm just bringing that up. I will read out of the book as I feel guided, but let's start with the Jody Bergsma Spirit Animal. The Loon. Oh my goodness, the Loon. Intuitive. Listen to the song in your soul. Trust your intuition as you have a way of knowing. Emerge from the busy life and seek more solitude. Recognize that you are unique and that you are loved. So I'm also seeing, you notice with the loon, there is a partnership. There's like three little, little, little ducklings here. And he's taking off, you know, to have time alone. And they're still being, so it's like there might be partnership with this. You know what I mean? Or family. There's still younger people who look up to you. Even watching them. Whoa. Almost like goose or uh, navigation, conjunction, and alliance. So with your astro cards, I am going to turn it upside down so I can see. I'm seeing a conjunction with um, whatever this is. Your intuition, navigation, goose. <laughs> Maybe it's dealing with Taurus, Leo, or Aries. But the Mars was spotlighted. So maybe look at the birds, like the intuitive because I'm even seeing this as goose and navigation um, with this conjunction, alliance. Okay, I did flip it over. So I'm going to read the tarot in both different ways. So I do have the tarot of the sacred kingdom coming up. So I'm going to put these both right here. I see the snow. Like even because of snow, like they're they're flying, you know. You know. <laughs> From. Wow. They're trusting their intuition even. The song, the key, the moon, even the navigation of everything. There's this conjunction. Listening to this song. There's the, this, I mean, because the music is right there. The music note, the purple, the key, the snowflake, and the Mars. Like, this energy drive, even pulling them to something. Seeking solitude, or even getting away from the cold, right? So... <clears throat> I see judgment in reverse with something, but remember, I flipped the cards over. So I'm going to look at the other way first, because judgment upright is an awakening, getting a second chance. That's the way I see it. Look, like, look, there's like an aha moment. Like even having a spiritual uh, awakening, like literally, like for whatever, and getting a second chance at life and like taking off. Wow, these cards match the loon, intuitive, and even this conjunction, this alliance. So we have King of Pentacles there in reverse, though. So Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, Masculine, and the moon. So you got those are your three cards. An alliance with, um, so I'm going to read it both ways, right? 
maybe not giving someone a second chance and moving on even because they're there's some alliance because the moon is there too wow so i told you the moon is spotlighted so the moon represents our emotions maybe keeping things hidden or secret this is also that piscean or cancer sign energy right the emotions the wolf is here judgment i think when i read it out of the book though it doesn't show me a reversal it's just gonna say what it is right so we're gonna look at these together here there's some alliance though so something to do with your mars energy and um your moon okay mars and moon conjunct possibly even you can have taurus or capricorn virgo you're dealing with them but this is about material stuff as well as trusting intuition i'm gonna put it the other way because we also have the advocate 32 so piscean energy possibly gemini taurus maybe leo maybe something like that bring up the signs i see Luis van something about the van the vans huh modern the advocate Maybe even sometimes it's even a grandmother or something like that. I don't know. Cousin, sibling, something like this. So the other way, okay, we're going to look at it both directions to navigate this. It would mean King of Pentacles upright, you know, being patient. He's not giving someone a second chance in this scenario. Look, the head is turned towards true emotions the the feel the moon is guiding him even there's a guidance from this moon energy look now this moon is like this these are beautiful cards i have to say i can't remember exactly <laughs> but i remember bernard and jennifer i think that's the last name of one and the first name okay so this is new the tarot of the kingdom i love the colors with this this blue they kind of it's so beautiful so i'm gonna read them both ways i'm i'm gonna read these are about our emotions and maybe even trusting this there's a conjunction with something maybe in sinistry even with somebody if you're not a king of pentacles but whatever or in the reverse it's you know them feeling like they don't have much and they've got to move on like they're in something's pulling them because they're in a lack mentality or there's um, they're keeping things hidden or secretive regarding their their motives. There's a greed or something. <clears throat> the music, the key, the moon. I don't know. Okay, so like I said, the advocate, you got the rose. So I'm going to put the rose here. It makes me think every, throw, every thorn has its rose or something like that. <laughs> every rose has its thorn. I said it backwards. I keep saying things backwards. That's weird. Mm, maybe seeing it a different way huh so this advocate the other is like it makes me think of the rose by bet midler which is very touching and loving some say love so there's this loving energy okay with the advocate a supporter a soul journey okay wow okay so aries or i almost said aquarius but maybe that's important um these are even into this akashic temple Sagittarius and Aries both got this, but whomever, whatever. There's some Libra energy, Piscean for sure. <clears throat> Freedom, the black and white horse. <laughs> the dark horse. The yin and yang spotlight it again with this. Freedom. So, wow. These are the sacred power reading cards for the soul's journey. Even, wow. And self-appreciation. This freedom and taking this action. The black and white, the, the yin and yang. So cancer sign energy, but, but whatever. Um, moose. Why I say moose? I don't even know. That just came out, guys. What is that? That's for someone, I guess. <gasps> Underneath there's the ten of cups. Oh, but there's also five of cups. Five, ten, ten, five, one, oh, five, something like that. I also see a trine, which is a nice sim symbiosis um, and a calm. Someone who makes you feel very calm. 52, 25, 16, 8, 16, Scorpio and Virgo energy. 
something in Scorpio. I'm just looking at the other cards. So there's also this unicorn portal, portal, so focusing your light and listen for a message, even from the nurturer, Saris, from Saris, 29. Look for the pot of gold and accept joy. So, six, two, nine, six, twenty-nine, eight, sixteen, eight, seven. Okay, I will find a moment throughout the day that I can dedicate to myself, find a comfortable space, and bring a pen and paper. I will write a letter of appreciation to myself where I will pour love into who I am and all that I do. Nurture yourself. Wow. So, I, and this could be two different, you know, Whoever's drawn into this, very interesting. It's okay to want to stay home and be alone. I deserve days to myself, days to relax and simply be. I honor how I feel and I take this day to do the things that feel nurturing to me. Even this on this soul journey too, being surrounded by love. And if you're feeling like you need to be alone or whatever, nurture yourself and there's sadness or regret or, you know, there's depression or something. I'm just setting them this way. 10, 10, 5, 5, 10, whatever. Those are your as well. Okay, so I'm seeing a trine, which is something working. All of your astrology with this, um, these different energies, 52, 5, 2, is um, a very pleasant energy. A sextile, a trine um, in the astrological. With, with this person in particular okay because there's definitely two different people here this is a partnership because i even saw it and there's multiple people there's families even taking time apart learning growing soul journey making a judgment call about certain things even trusting yourself of when you need a time out <laughs> to go get yourself balanced and rest and get this solar calm to clarify and investigate things, even in the scorpionic nature, things that might be hidden. Even some of this, this you focus your focus your light. Okay. 816, 87. Very interesting. Scorpionic. Okay. I brought that up too. And then the Ceres is about nurturing. This is also scorpionic. It's the 29th. Because it's harvesting. There's like the, the Sith here, the Sith. Hmm, you know, tell six eleven six twenty-nine. Eleven twenty-nine? I don't know. Eleven elevens. Okay. Look for the pot of gold and accept joy. About this nurturing. Wow. Seven twenty-nine. Okay. Whew. All right, so let's look at these sacred power reading cards. I have really explained it quite well. I do believe at this point, what are we on time? It's 18 minutes in. But I'm just going to open it up, understanding even a reflection. Keep your dis distance and even ask for help for some people, right? Stepping away from others is essential to seeing the truth in all situations. The wolf asks you to be cautious of the people around you and to honor your own personal space. Thoughts and feelings, okay? Sometimes you need to separate yourself from the pack in order to gain perspective and move on. And I'm even seeing that like with the, like in the loon, all right? And get to the the moon in reverse would be expressing these emotions even and then all right? I am now willing and able to see the truth in all situations. I accept my vulnerability. It adds strength to my being. So especially if you were dealing with Aries, I feel like Aries got this as well. Maybe Aquarius, a Taurus, a lot of Taurus, maybe Leos um, in particular. Okay. All right. So now I got to remember which, which numbers as we go down. I like that there's the purple with like this card, this mindful message is matching very beautifully. I am enough, even self-appreciation on this soul journey. Okay, and even an advocate. There's like Piscean and Aries with that a lot. Very interesting. And then you got the moon, so that's the Piscean, but also the Cancer sign, definitely. And this freedom, there's Sagittarius or Aries. I don't know. There's maybe in Libra. Um, and maybe that's about the moons. Um, 
right? Like I'm saying, so there was Mars and Moon. Um, conjunct, possibly, with certain... Hmm. That gives, like, this passion to follow these emotions or even fires up emotions. Okay. All right. I forget what number it is. Oh, it doesn't tell me on here. Oh, yeah, they're in alphabetical order. I remember now. Okay, freedom. And they're about um, even overcoming some type of sadness or these emotions. Regret. Because there is a whole bunch of, you know, we go through a, a rainbow of emotions. There's a lot of happiness, though. There is. Okay. Soul journey. QRS. I'm all QRS. <laughs> okay. That's the 30. 66 and 67. Through the light of God, I ask for my will to be recognized by the highest order, guiding me upon my life's journey. This is a life lesson learned from the experience. From the moment you chose to return to Earth in this incarnation, you decided to be a conscious creator of your life's journey. Your story, as you have written it, is held within the records of the Akashic temples and can be accessed, viewed, and experienced at any time. Organized like a library, the Akashic Temple holds the records of each soul's journey energetically within the astral plane. Thoughts, feelings, actions, deeds, past lives, purposes, and soul lessons are all recorded within this place, acting as spiritual database. Every human process we experience is recorded. Events, births, deaths, marriages, and other lives can be reflected upon at any time. Your individual record is protected by your guardians who ensure that permission is granted and safe access is available at your request. The integrity of the Akashic is never compromised as a result. Right now you are experiencing a life lesson. Whatever the outcome, know that this lesson is for a reason. Even if you're unaware of it, it is important that you become mindful of your experience acknowledging decisions and actions that have led you to this moment. Ask yourself what it is that I need from this situation. How am I affected by it? What can I do that will help me correct this negative course of action? How can I improve my soul's connection to my higher purpose? What can I do to support humanity? While you may be unable to see a way out of your circumstances right now, this will pass and you will soon be shown the reason for recent events. It's important to recognize the value of your experiences and resolve past issues and patterns from the experience of lessons learned. Co-create a beautiful life with new perspectives. The choice is up to you. Where do you want to go from here? All right. And then we have freedom. <laughs> freedom. Yeah. <laughs> freedom. All right. That's 14, 34, and 35 even. Okay. Wild and free. The horse chooses to run in any direction. There's a lot of the cancer sign. Gemini and Pisces, Aries with this. I am moving forward in the direction I choose bringing me closer to achieving my goals and my divine purpose. Even there's some Leo, maybe Scorpionic too. Possibly Libra. Wild and free. The horse chooses. There's a lot. I'm just saying there's a lot of water energy for sure. Because it's right by the moon card even too. Pisces and Cancers specifically though. Not as much with the Scorpionic. I mean Scorpio's right here with this too. So yeah. And Leo energy or something. Gemini. There's a lot of Gemini, too. Okay. All right. Understand that everything in your life right now is completely within your power to change. Once you co-operate co with your soul's... Cooperate. <laughs> cooperate with your soul's request to be free from the emotional or physical ties. You become limitless and can run free again. The arrival of the horses brings news of personal journeys and new directions. The white horse brings truth, honor, and integrity. And the dark horse brings the shadow of mystery, pride, and illusions. Interesting. So I brought up the dark horse, which was weird because it came, like I saw a reader say it was for a Libra reading. And it said, Libra, you are the dark horse. And so immediately my friend was like, oh, I thought the Katy Perry song. Dark horse. <laughs> so there's the shadow aspect, right? Understanding that. Two, um, there's also George Harrison, Dark Horse. 
was interesting. Anyways, anyways, the white horse, freedom, truth, honor, integrity. Bringing both together to create a yin-yang balance allow you to understand what is preventing your freedom. Follow through with your agreements before you make new commitments. In fact, you are. The unicorn portal. So a lot for this video, a lot of, you know, more with the horses and the unicorns, right? I'm really sensing that. And not so much. There's, I mean, you have birds for the air, but not the fairies with this one. And that's totally cool. That's totally cool. So look forward to, I'm doing the last unicorn um, and some fun little two different unicorn squad. I got one of those. I'm just bringing that up because I see the unicorn portal and the solar calm giving and clarifying. Mm. All right. Your soul desires freedom. Honor your free will by choosing to acknowledge your desire for a break and a change even if it is only temporary. By removing restrictions, you can move in any direction. Feeling trapped or burdened by family affairs, responsibilities, finances, relationships, and or career choices can sometimes make us feel suffocated. Your soul is trying to release you from commitments as you yearn for the freedom to make your own choices. Breaking away from old attachments and responsibilities, your soul is asking you to be playful and to have some fun. The horse asks you to simplify your life and expand your knowledge. Seek more information before you make future decisions. It is essential through this growth period that you find the freedom that you need to allow yourself to flourish. You have the power to change the direction of your life. I am moving forward in the direction I choose, bringing me closer to achieving my goals and my divine life purpose. So there's definitely Capricorn with this too. Very interesting. Huh. Very, and then Pisces, a lot of the Piscean and Cancer sign. Gemini. <laughs> wow. Okay. Maybe Leo as well. A little bit. A little bit Leo. A little bit Leo. Okay. Let's see what the advocate is the 32 with the roses. Okay, and you also had like the earth sign energy. Remember, king of pentacles. Okay, wow, the loner. 14, same spelling. That was the last card. And 44, very interesting. Pisces. <laughs> oh, goodness. Astrological sign. There's even possibly Cancer, Aries, Leo. Hmm. What are you happy doing alone and have no need to share in order to feel content? Hmm. All right. So that was just what I opened it up to, but I'm going to go to 32. I got the Jester, 38, the Reynolds, whole rose, Reynolds, lovely Gemini. Oh boy. And Virgo, happiness. That's interesting. I did not know. Oh. Well, I did not know. La France, Rose, the sensual. I'm getting closer to it, okay? Scorpio. The advocate is Aries energy. I also see it as Pisces, Gemini, Taurus, or Leo. 8 1, Virgo, maybe. 80 and 81. Louis Van Hoot, Rose. Time for teamwork, enlisting the help of others, and a little bit of fact finding. By all means, speak up, but brush up on your communication skills by pausing to listen until you are certain that the message will be taken in the right context and be as effective as possible. If you're stuck, then you need to reevaluate your commitments. The advocate is dedicated to change for the greater good, and they will create a life that revolves around this. Those in their sphere are thought of as a team and family members, working with them in all sorts of capacities for the shared vision. Vision. So, what motivates you? And nurturing that, even. Wow. Artemis. Meanings and uses about commitment, friendships, communication, mediation, and persuasion. And if you notice what I'm saying, even this, they're not 
alone. Like, only on this one, looking for the pot of gold. Accepting joy. But there's two horses. There's multiple... Like, there's two unicorns. It's still not a loneliness. There's still two cups with the five of cups. It's like others might have left. Or there's a sense of just... I don't... You know, time to nurture yourself. Or a partnership. Or even balancing your own... You know, but they're... It's so... One is resting and one is up moving. Taking the action. Like, there's a... Taking turns in this as well. And giving lead and then giving the other person. I don't know how, how else to explain. There's a lot of the white horse with this, right? And the unicorn. So more truth, more honor, more clarity. Unicorn portal. Then shadow. The shadow is like chasing behind. <laughs> So the truth and the clarity is coming forward. The light's coming forward. I'm seeing that. This is lovely. I really like this for you. Okay, is there any other cards that I want to read? I think I'm going to let it be. <laughs> let it be. Let it be. Okay, that is all for this particular video. I hope you have enjoyed. This was fascinating. These are lovely cards. Some true emotions coming forth. Maybe even making a judgment call of like, not wanting a second chance at something or even leaving like needing to go do something right emerging from the busy life miracles spiritual gift to perform acts of supernatural power that are recognized by others to have altered the ordinary cause of nature this is like alchemy even or something and the king of pentacles even making it in reality you know this passion the mars an alliance a conjunction with even this moon and these emotions that's beautiful okay i was really excited for these little gems and all this this turned out fun i hope you have enjoyed thank you all so much um and like i said look forward especially with the unicorn stuff that's coming up in the future in aquarius season and in february's messages all right i am going to go to the next part which was the gun and the white apple all right, the dino gun. What are we on time? 3211. The gun, it's a dino attack, nerf gun, egg shot. Okay, it's pretty dang cool. These are so cute. Your sixth sense, you got two of them, or six instincts. There's also the white apple, so that's why I chose this one. The white apple, it's a very nice charm. A seashell, okay. This one also had the bow and arrow, okay. And we did have the broken heart, okay, so... Keep that in mind as we're going through these. So let's see what the animal actually want to see the sixth instinct. This has been fun seeing this one first. Clear cognance. The ability to have a clear knowing with no practical explanation for why. Like even being able to tell that someone has, there's they have a broken heart. The, the little, I find it interesting with the bow and arrow, right? And, and a partnership, apples, like maybe teacher, and um, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the dino attack. Hmm. And knowing but can't, can't tell you why. Hospitality. I actually saw this one when it flipped out. So that's interesting that it went on to this pile. The special ability God gives to someone to provide an open home and warm welcome to those in need of food, lodging, and fellowship. Wow. Fellowship hospitality wow this is a this is a amazing virtue god given it's because this is in a sense of when god blesses you you bless others just intuitively knowing for without just being just trusting even and people coming to you for for help in need and you having the resources and the 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 information, the guidance to be able to help them along their way. Children, maybe even working with families or children. Oh. And being able to even tell. Okay. All right, let's see this Jody Bergs with Spirit Animal, the dolphin. He play even with this healing swim in the happy joy of living inhale confidence and exhale fear dive into your wisdom and go with the flow 
three dolphins in here, the dolphin play. So dolphins always make me think of, you know, the water energy. They are very social and fun. So they have some Leo energy, even though it's like a Cancer or Pisces energy. Look, Aries is under there. So let's see what the, the rest of these are. Okay. <clears throat> the Aries taking action play. So dolphin actually does make me think of Aries too. So, and even acting. Do you know what I mean? In playing debilitated okay there's a discomfort and and that and someone knowing that feeling it feeling like lowered like debilitated unable to make it all the way leo okay aries leo all right i see will of fortune in your tarot oh ten of swords that's probably this debilitated discomfort and the empress hmm a, a feminine, a mother, a wife, um, going into hermit mode, possibly Virgo. Or, because it is the Empress. So, Leo, energy, shining, hospitality. So, I see 114, maybe even during that time. I'm also seeing grandfather energy with this, which is interesting. One five, yeah, one five, five five, maybe when Taurus, but um, Leo, a Cancer, Aries, Capricorn. Okay, the caregiver and thirty three is your roses, even like hospitality. Very interesting. So I'm gonna look at both of these. So if we flip it upside down, it'd mean like it's not the right timing. Someone trusts that there's some weird karmic thing and someone's in a down cycle, knowing that they're trying to, that they, they feel like they've, they've been through maybe addiction even, or something very challenging. Ten of Swords is very challenging. It's painful um, in your head, in your thoughts. Um, and for some of you, I'd flipped it the other way, right? So this is um, recognizing it's healing. And so, it's feeling like at the bottom, like you get the your world turned upside down and you don't know. And so trying to get this empress energy, this creative flow, this feminine mothering, nurturing, uh, boss, feminine, wife, whomever, to feel back on her feet so she can get back into the world and not feel like she's got to um, hibernate, <laughs> um, to go outside. So that's this, but the way it came, so that's me flipping it the other way and seeing the, the other duality. It's like hospitality and letting someone, you see with all these cards, it's even, whether this be you or them, you know, letting someone come into their life and home and helping them get back on their feet Especially, you know what, like single mothers or something like this. Or things like that, something like this. Do you know what I mean? I'm not seeing anything, you know, and maybe it's just, or it's someone who doesn't have a mother or their mother wasn't there. Or they didn't have, you know, it has something to do with a mother. Virgo. Or, so someone feels like they've been, you know, they go into hermit mode because they feel like something's over. It's... There might have been addiction. Maybe they've kept it very secret. <clears throat> but you intuitively know without knowing. <laughs> you got four cards with this one. Right? So I'm going to keep it. So taking action, going even to try and get some clarification. Like, you know, to, to know more. Because you sense it. And see that someone feels debilitated or or in a discomfort because they're going through an ending of something that was harmful. A feminine or something like that, right? This Empress energy. This Will of Fortune is this divine timing. Um, and so maybe this is an opportunity for you to have, if you have this ability to offer this help. This is even a karmic thing. Like, you know what I mean? Um, it's a good karmic thing of being ser being of service and helping others. Like, um, maybe it's a paying it forward, if you know what I mean, for their ch for children or for 
Okay, that's interesting. That's all I got with that. Okay, <clears throat> the caregiver here. And then the rose, and you got change. Interesting. So a lot of Aries, as well as maybe some Sagittarius as well coming through, but this change in the season and accepting this change, this caregiver. Okay. Wow, 33. <laughs> all right, let me look at I see, I see 910 again. Where'd it go? 10, 9, 3, 10, 10, 3, 3, 10, 10, 3, yeah. And 33, so uh, maybe also some Gemini Virgo, but someone in your community, maybe a sibling, a neighbor, or, um, you know, maybe even a cousin, but or, or just a friend in the neighborhood, a caregiver. Or they're Gemini or Virgo, double Gemini. We'll see what the card also says with the roses. Dino attack. Nerf gun. Okay. They were being a T-Rex. <laughs> Change, all right? And then compassion. Taking the action to make these changes and then having compassion. Hospitality. Working with Quan Yin. So even Capricorn, I feel like, got this compassion. And then Aries or Sagittarius also got these as well. So those are just different signs that I'm seeing. Casting spells of love. Okay, mindful messages as well. The words I speak and the stories I tell are like spells. What I say and believe, I attract more of. I shift my story from lack to abundance, from victim to empowered, and from complaint to gratitude. Now, when I speak to others through my words, I am casting beautiful spells, right? So being careful about your communication, your thoughts about self or others, because that's what this Ten of Swords is. They're all about thoughts, words, communication, and it hurt, like hurtful things, feeling betrayed. Wow, this is crazy. I, I find this beautiful. They got two of those and then two of these. Personal journey. I follow what feels right within me without needing validation from others. We are each our own journey, on our own journey, and mine does not need to look like anyone else's. My enjoyment and satisfaction is validation enough. We've got the fool there, so Aries, because uh, Aries was pulled with that too. Interesting, is your tarot, your dragon, taking this, this leap of faith kind of into the unknown. There's purity with this rose. Even this rose is kind of a light pink, but white, the golden it's like getting ready to try something new, change. Wow, and temperance. Wow, so Sagittarius energy did is pulling again. Keeping things balanced, even with compassion, being understanding and patient because the tortoise is here as well. There's two cups in this, right? Interesting enough. It's like she's filling her own cup, though, or she's filling up the cup for the tortoise taking care of and being patient. Wow. So there's like two cups there. So there's soulmate energy there. <clears throat> so it's all already saying like it's a divinely guided thing. So even what the people are going through, um, it was part of the plan for them to also, and then they can give back to pay it forward or whatever, you know, overcoming struggles. Cosmic Sapphire, Stargate of Lyra. Well, we got 33 again. <gasps> the Caregiver and the Cosmic Sapphire. Act with honor and speak your truth. Integrity. The Caregiver and the Cosmic Sapphire. Whoa. Okay, Stargate of Lyra and then Cocoon of White Light. Expand your casual chakras. Enter the Unicorn Kingdom. So that's going to be coming up. I'm going to get the, the Unicorn... Uh, Last Unicorn Tarot and um, work with these as well. Coming up in like, um, I almost said Sagittarius season, but maybe uh, Aquarius. That cancering, that mothering. I'm saying that being very mothering, compassionate. Giving to, taking care, care of others when, and then also being able to be taken care of. The caregiver. Cocoon of white light, rest in perfect love and understand oneness. Wow, a one. So we go zero, one, six, one, nine. Wow. And build your light body. Accelerate your ascension. Mahatma energy, the 29. 
29. Wow. And access your gifts. Stargate of Lyra. Compassion. Access your gifts of hospitality. Explore your treasure chest. The dragon flies right there. Why it too? Oh my gosh. So maybe that's also part of your sign because it's over here. Explore your treasure chest. Accept who you truly are. Compassionate, loving, generous, giving. A caregiver. The descendant is in partnerships energy. So maybe Aries is your partnership. You could have a Libra rising for some of you. Um, or because I'm putting it by the Aries energy. I also see maybe possibly Gemini or yeah, I see Libra too. Uh, Pisces. Oh, maybe Capricorn or Aries. So vice versa. <clears throat> and then we got the freedom of truth. More about the communication. Communicate honestly and be who you truly are. 12, 29. And then the final was this cancer sign. So about being loving, compassionate. 410, Aries. Wow. So maybe specific with some of, or 10, 4, 104. Scorpionic, compassionate, loving. Wow. 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 Let's see what the caregiver is. Okay. Well, the giver. Wow. Okay. Weird. Adam Rose. 2, 9, and 29 got spotlighted again. 7, 4. The Cancer sign and Quan Yin. Whoa. Okay. So this is very fascinating because this is the Quan Yin compassion. And then the Cancer sign over here. I see 7, 4, 7, 5. Working with compassion and Quan Yin. Um, 29 was there too, right? And 2, 9. Hmm. Slow down the rhythm of your life and give yourself more time. <clears throat> more love and understanding and make sure the patterns you have already created are serving you well wow you could find this is a good time to take on additional training and those in such a position could be drawn to teach what they know be wary of neglecting your own needs at the moment what do you hope your legacy will be the giver is committed to community and to the care and support of others in their surrounds. They're dedicated to creating strong, lasting legacies that can ensure the longevity of what they care about. Wow. Adam. USA. France. Okay. Very interesting. I just opened it up to that. So I wanted to share that. So it's pretty close to the caregiver and it's the giver. So, so vice versa, right? It's like kind of the beautiful yin-yang duality even. There's the storyteller. The advocate was one of the last ones, which is interesting. I didn't pay attention. That went right in flow. That's pretty crazy. Hmm. 82 and 83. The cancer sign again. Wow. The caregiver. So Virgos as well. I'm going to say maybe Scorpio. Like I said. Um... Bridget, oh my gosh, the deity, Bridget. This I don't recognize these ones, but I recognize Bridget. Meanings and uses self-care, nurture, acceptance, trust, compassion. So, wow, so much about compassion. The caregiver knows that support looks different for all different situations and people involved and that there is no blanket form of comfort and care. They will assess the outlook carefully and create a structure of care to suit. Bred by horticulturist and gardening writer William Paul. Interesting. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I found that was fascinating, guys. Okay, thank you all so much. I hope you have enjoyed. I do plan on doing a few more of these videos. Like I said, I have some more of these fun little toys. Um, for helping and and the charms these are I'm working with more piles of these similar cards and uh, let's see I have four more of these that uh, to look forward to or you can check them out maybe they're already uploaded thank you I hope this has helped with understanding um, it's been very beautiful regardless um, I've enjoyed it I hope you have well as well thank you bye bye